Hi, I've got a short extract of music on the board here, and as you look at it, hopefully you're slightly troubled by what you see. Why should you be troubled by what you see? Because actually the notes all look sensible, and if you sing that tune, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? make sense it would make even more sense if I just made one alteration to this note there we go um, but the notes sound all right uh, the rhythms all seem to make sense 6-8 is telling us isn't it something time signatures remember tell us the top numbers saying what we've got in the bar where we've got six or something in the bar the bottom numbers telling us what those somethings are so eight at the bottom if you know your time signatures is telling us that the units that we're counting here are quavers so six quavers in the bar um, so you know what's wrong with it Actually, what's wrong with it is the way the notes are beamed together. In other words, how we join things together. That's where that looks rather bizarre in 6-8. Why am I talking about this? Well, there are plenty of people out there asking for help in this area because there are exams in music theory around the world where you're given these kind of exercises, where you're given a piece of music like that and somebody says, beam the notes as they should be organized. So kind of grouping things together in the way that is the standard arrangement. Other people are maybe writing their own music and then just sort of not being entirely sure how these notes do beam together. So there's a little bit of a query about that. Other people are putting music into all sorts of bits of musical software, some of which is rather better at sorting this stuff out for you than other bits. But in my experience, even the best musical software sometimes does something rather strange with the beaming of notes. So we're just going to spend a few moments looking at this example and working out how the beaming should be organised. Well, the first thing is you need to be sure you understand your time signatures. And of course, we've got this thing called simple time and we've got this other thing called compound time. If you need to know more about that, we've got resources at Music Matters to help explain all that. So have a look at simple and compound time on the Music Matters material and that will be explained to you. Basically, it works like this. If you've got two, three, or four as your upper number, you're in simple time. If you've got six, nine, or 12 as your upper number, then you're in compound time. So there's a bit more to it than that. But as soon as you see that six, you're thinking, ah, oh, I'm in compound time. What does compound time mean? Well, it means we start with what it says on the tin. So we've got six quavers, in each bar okay so or eighth notes if you're using the American system well we have got six eighth notes or six quavers in each bar so what's the problem well the problem is this when we're in compound time one of these time signatures with six nine or twelve at the top it's telling us to group things together in threes so if I've got six of something in the bar it means I've got two lots of three. Okay, so what are these lots? They're quavers or these eighth notes. So I'm trying to organize each bar so I can put a group of three quavers together, three eighth notes together, and therefore it's going to flag up two beats. So when I'm in six eight time, there's the six eight. So it's telling me that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But because it's a compound time, it says organize life into two groups of three. What does that then look like? Because if I beam those together in these groups of three, what I've started with now becomes this. And then I can take one step further because I can then say, well, if I'm in six, eight time, here are my two groups of three. So what does each group of three amount to? Well, the total value of that group of three is this. So I end up with two beats in the bar. 
Because when you see six, you think, well, how can that mean there are two beats and a bar? But when you see this, you can see how we get there. So by organizing them into two groups of three, there are still six quavers in the bar. So with six eighths is perfectly true. But because it's compound time, one of those things with six, nine or 12 at the top, you always organize what you've got into groups of three, which is what we've done here. And then you say, what's each group of three worth? Well, it's worth one of these, isn't it? So I've got two of these dotted crotchet beats or dotted quarter note beats. Therefore, the beaming, joining together of notes and everything, should reflect this. So if I want to know how to beam the notes properly, what I really need to do is to organize this melody into these beats. In other words, like this, you can see that this amounts to the first beat. And then this amounts to the second beat. So I've got the equivalent of these six quavers, six eighth notes, but I've got these two dotted crotchet beats. Okay, if I carry on, well, let's do the first three quavers or eighth notes. One, two, who, three, he. So these all belong together, look. And then in the second half of that bar, I've got one, two, three, or quavers, four, five, six. So they're gonna go together. And then I've got some more complicated looking rhythm. But if you do the maths here, you'll see that this lot belongs together. And you'll see that this lot belongs together. And we've also got the first bit of the next bar or the next measure. And so this adds up to the first beat of the next bar. Okay, so having done that, how do I notate it? You might want to pause at this moment and have a go at doing it for yourself if you want to see where you're at with all of this. And then you could come back to me and see what the answer is. But it should look like this, because those three quavers or eighth notes are there inside the first beat, well, they should all be beamed together. Then I can see that those three notes belong to this first beat. When I come to this one, this is an interesting one because you could say, well, there's nothing wrong with that because that's all comfortably sitting inside the second beat. But actually, here's something to think about. Never use a tie when you could use a dot. Now that's not the same as saying never use a tie. Sometimes you need to use a tie to connect from one beat to the next or to tie a note across a bar line. But if you're inside a beat and you could use a dot instead of a tie, always worth considering. So the second beat of the first bar should actually look like this. And you see, as soon as you look at that first bar or that first measure, you can much more clearly see this first beat and this second beat. Why do we divide these things into three? It's the nature of compound time. What we say as a definition of simple and compound time is that in simple time, beats naturally divide into two. So if you've got a crotchet or a quarter note beat, it naturally divides into two quavers or two eighth notes. Um, but when you're in compound time, the beats naturally divide into three. So you can see if these are the beats, they're naturally dividing into three. But you have to sort of do it the other way around to work it out. You have to start by saying, well, there's six, eight. What does that mean? It means this. Let's organize them into groups of three. And then I can see what the beats are. But now you've got the beats, you can see that these beats are dividing into groups of three, not three notes, but the equivalent of three quavers or three of those eighth notes. Okay, now going into the second bar, the second measure, we can see that all of this lot really belongs together, doesn't it? So it sort of starts off all right, but there's no reason on earth why this couldn't all be connected. You see why? Because it's all sitting inside that first beat of that measure. And then when I look at the second half of that measure, well, is there any reason not to connect those three quavers or three eighths notes? No, there isn't. So 
Let's stick them together. There we are. And then we can have a bar line. Well, we're definitely going to need this tie, aren't we? I mean, we can't sort of substitute a dot there because we're going across a bar line. So there's nothing we can do about the tie. So we need the tie. And then as I go into the next bar, the next measure, I can see that this is making up the first of these beats. So let's have a tie and then let's copy this rhythm, but let's beam all this together. I'll have that and that. Okay, then this lot really all belongs together as well, doesn't it? So there we are. That lot all together is going to constitute this second beat. So there we are with that one. And even at the end, when I'm looking at this last note, I'm thinking, do I need to have that tie? Or is there a note value that equates to one of these beats? Well, obviously there is. It's going to be a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note. Now, when you look at this, you immediately see that this is actually much easier to read than this. That's not horrible to read. In fact, it's a bit easier to read. Now I've put the circles in. But what you want to be able to do is to see where these beats come. Now, the way that the beaming is organized, you can see there's the first beat of that measure. There's the second beat. Here's the first beat. Here's the second beat. And here's the first beat of the measure or the bar that follows. So in this short um, little time we have together here, we haven't exhausted this whole agenda. It's quite a big one, really, if you want to look at every single time signature and work out what you have to do. What I've tried to do, however, is to extol the principles of what you have to do, and to do that in relation to compound time, which is usually a bit more of a bother to people than working in simple time. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, see how you got on with your working of it compared to this and see where you were right. And if you were totally right, well done to you. And if there was something you missed there, well, here's a chance just to see what you should have done. It's very helpful this, you know, if you're going to compose, write, arrange, whatever, you need to have the beaming right for the time signature. Otherwise people get in a pickle when they play it and things don't always make sense. If you're performing and reading music, it's helpful to know exactly how this beaming works because it helps you to see beats and to keep your rhythm on track. So there we are, a few minutes on the topic of beaming.